And so we invite you to center and focus this time on Christ's abiding presence here in this sanctuary and in our hearts. And so to do that this morning, let's look at our call to worship as we look to the scriptures of Jeremiah 23 and Luke chapter 1. And if you would respond accordingly, joining our voices together in the bold print. It is done. God has always been in charge, yesterday and today and tomorrow. Even when things seem out of control, God's reign is on its way. Let us prepare the way for God. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we are so thankful for this day that you've given us. Indeed, it is yours. And so, God, we give back to it ourselves today as sacrifices of praise in this sanctuary. God, we are thankful for all who have gathered here and ask that you would bind us together, Lord, with cords that can't be broken as the body of Christ. God, we thank you for your presence here among us and ask that the Holy Spirit would lead us in worship. Have thine own way, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to stand if you are able and to turn in your hymnals as we sing our opening hymn of praise. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Number 715 in your hymnal. say it again. Rejoice. Rejoice. In rejoicing in God's presence here and in Christ as King, will you also turn and welcome one another as sons and daughters of God who reigns and in the peace of Christ. Good morning. Christ's peace be with you all. As you are seated, we want to invite our children to be dismissed, unless you want to hear the bells. Okay, if you want to hear the bells, then wait just a minute, because we also welcome this morning our Joyful Noise Bell Choir back to worship with us. They've, this is a marathon day for them. They rang at Paintsville First United Methodist this morning at 10 o'clock. They're ringing here, and then they're loading up the bells and headed to First Christian Church this evening for our community Thanksgiving service. So hopefully you all have scheduled a nap for later this afternoon. 
<laughs> and lunch. <laughs> but would you welcome as our bell choir joins us in praise this morning. Praise to the Lord. Thank you, ladies. Now Children's Church, Becky said. <laughs> glad you're here today, Aaliyah. And anyone else who's already downstairs, we're so glad you're here in worship today. Looking at our announcements this morning, we have several, so much so that it's an insert in your bulletin. Uh, coming, a lot of things coming up with the Christmas season upon us. Uh, we'll begin with getting our sanctuary ready and prepared really all this week. If you have some extra times to fluff some garland or straighten some bows, uh, we'll gladly uh, take any help that we can. But specifically on Saturday, November 26, from 1 to 5 p.m., remembering many hands make light work, we invite you to come during those hours and help us to prepare for our Hanging of the Green service, which is during morning worship next Sunday, the first Sunday in Advent. Also, um, beginning on Wednesday, November 30th, the Advent season kicks off with some Wednesday uh, discipleship activities, some new, a new Bible study called The Harpooner that's going to be led by Frank Heberlin, which will be the adult and youth Bible study. 
and then a children's Advent adventure led by Christina and Donna Butcher that will be again with a fellowship meal at 530 uh, with worship a brief session of worship at 615 and then our Bible study time from 630 to 730 another announcement we do have some pecans if you are like Wilma Eldridge and you are in a pinch and you need some pecans today do you have those with you Okay, good news. Rhonda has those with her. Half of the order came in. The rest is on its way, so hopefully we'll save those for Christmas. But if you need pecans, see Rhonda today after church. Those are $12 a bag for pieces, halves, and chocolate covered. Any other announcements that I'm missing? Remember that the church office will be closed for the holiday on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Tonight, of course, as I mentioned, the bells will be ringing again at the Community Thanksgiving Worship Service, which is sponsored by the Paintsville Johnson County Ministerial Association. Uh, several of the churches here in the area have a part in that tonight. Uh, so please come and worship with us, giving thanks uh, for all that God has done this year here in our community. Excited to report uh, some good news, to hear a report also from our Encounter Missions Director, Beth Castle, uh, to hear some preaching from Pastor Ben Stevens at First Christian, uh, Pastor Tyler, uh, Pastor Dan Heberlin. It'll be a great time of fellowship. So come if you would and join. And, and the choir is singing. I knew I missed that. The bell is ringing and the choir is singing. Becky's put together an a anthem of thankfulness uh, for a choir. Uh, portion of the service as well so I'm excited to join in that hope you can come at 630 at First Christian Church which is just across from Paintsville First Methodist Church on the side of the uh, Johnson County Library happy birthday on November 21st tomorrow to Russ Briggs Russ is in Lexington we wish him a happy birthday are there any announcements or any anniversaries or birthdays that I've left off of the bulletin today Y'all are a quiet bunch this morning. On Thanksgiving Day. Well, what a day to give thanks for Mike. 69? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Let's not put him down yet. Goodness. <laughs> he is. <laughs> well, happy birthday on Thanksgiving. You get, to dub you get a double celebration there. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Are any online? Tomorrow. Well, happy birthday to Kristen. Any others? Well, great. Let's move then to our sharing of prayer, joys, and concerns as we lift our needs to one another and to the Lord knowing indeed that God hears our prayers. I'll share a joy and a prayer concern all at once. Uh, we had a wonderful celebration of life yesterday uh, in the fellowship hall for the family of Jay Callis. Uh, Jay was a member here at Mayo and very involved and active in ministry and in youth ministry, and it was truly like a family reunion here yesterday if you were able to be here I want to especially thank uh, Karen and Barb and Jeff and Lauren and James and Barry and everyone who brought food. Um, just the expressions of love. Dee Dee already sent a message this morning and, and said, you know, Mayo is home for their family. So what a gift that was to them to be able to gather here and to celebrate Jay's life. So thank you for all of that. And in prayer, let's remember the Callis family in these days of grief. Uh, let's also remember Walt reminded me to be in prayer for those who uh, were injured uh, in, the, in the bus crash in McGoffin County, for the driver and for the six students who are still in the hospital, uh, some I believe in critical condition. So let's remember that in our prayers as well. Are there any other prayer joys or concerns we want to share this morning? Oh, no. Thank you, Mary. If you couldn't hear that, Jackie Runyon, let's remember Jackie in our prayer. She's battling COVID and several of her co-workers as well. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, Mike Baldwin asked that we remember a co-worker of his with Painsville Utilities, Tony Gullett, who suffered a heart attack yesterday, um, is in Highland Regional Medical Center with um, in his stable condition for now. So let's remember Tony in our prayers this morning. Brenda. Oh. Yes, praise God. Thank you, Brenda. Remember, Bobby and Christy are traveling today, as well as the Huberlands. Um, so a lot of people traveling. So let's remember those traveling mercies in our prayers. Barb. Okay. Oh, wow. Any other prayer, joys, or concerns? Preston, good to see you today. Preston's been uh, around the world. I'm glad to have you back here in your hometown worshiping with us today. Um, welcome home. Any others? We also had a celebration, goodness, it's been a whirlwind, but we. Uh, had in a dinner yesterday, the uh, Johnson, Count, Johnson Central FCCLA uh, reached out and asked to partner with local churches in serving the community and their leadership team, cooked all the food uh, with Miss Angie Gamble music uh, at the helm, and served just an, an incredible Thanksgiving meal yesterday. I think there were around 130 uh, plates served there and many more delivered and many more carryouts. So thanks be to God for that, for those who were served yesterday. It was delicious. It, was delicious. it really was. She, she told me the secret to that turkey. I'll pass it along <laughs> if you want to know. Uh, but yes, it's a wonderful time of food and fellowship, and it was great to see students stepping up and taking on uh, that work. Um, I know several other churches also had meals yesterday for the community. <sighs> And Paintsville Church of Christ asked that I share that they will be hosting a free Thanksgiving dinner at, at their uh, church on Thanksgiving Day uh, from uh, 11 to noon to 2. So if anyone wants to go by there and pick up a meal, they said feel free to just come and, and get it to go if you'd like or to take it to someone that you know is in need. So wonderful hospitality and, and fellowship there among, among that church. Any others? Wonderful. Again, I say rejoice. As we go to the Lord in prayer, I want to remind you, of course, that our altar is always open. If you uh, feel the need to come forward in prayer this morning, I'd be glad to join you in prayer uh, for whatever need that you would like to bring. Uh, we'll go into our hymn of prayer this morning as we bow our hearts to God, singing hymn number 301, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross.
The Lord be with you. Together let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, on this day as we exalt Christ as King of kings and Lord of lords, God, we come to you this morning knowing that you are interceding for us even as you interceded on the cross. God, we come with those images before us of your death, celebrating in the glory of your resurrection and worshiping in the abundant life that Christ offers us here and now in the world that God so loved. 
God, as we come with our hearts lifted in praise and thanksgiving, we remember the many who are lifted up in other ways. God, as we have named for one another and for those about whom we are most concerned, we ask, O oh God, that you look with mercy on those who are nailed to crosses of pain and suffering from those forces which destroy the body, affect the mind, and drain the spirit. Give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Remember all these for whom we pray, and remember us, O oh God, in your realm of light. God, for these that we hold so dearly before our congregation here today, and that we bring trusting in the name of Jesus Christ alone for power and healing and authority. God, for those who grieve, for the Callis family, for Dee Dee and Maggie and Jacob and Courtney and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, for all those who are sick. God, for Jackie Runyon. For Tony Gullett. For Brenda's family. For my Uncle Ford. For Billy Joe and her family. For all these, O oh God, that we hold now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those, O oh God, who are affected by this bus crash that we have experienced here in our community for the people in McGoffin County, O oh God, as they wait and in anxiety and in fear for those, O oh God, who are in the hospital. We pray, God, that you would bring recovery and fullness of life. Restore their families, O oh God. Restore their bodies. For these, O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And O oh God, we are reminded of how how dangerous it is at times to to be in this world and oh god we we say that not in a spirit of fear but asking oh god that you would give us wisdom that you would slow us down that you would be with all oh god who are traveling this thanksgiving holiday for those who are traveling this weekend for jeff for the heberlands for the terrys for brenda's family make us mindful oh lord for all who are traveling, give your mercy, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, God, we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. First scripture lesson this morning comes from the Psalms, chapter 46. If you'd like to follow along, I invite you to turn in your pew Bible to page 552. So we hear these song, this song of praise. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He, turn, he burns the shields with fire. Be still. And know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of God for we the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to invite um, anyone who would be willing to volunteer this morning as an usher Anybody? Mary, Mary will. Thank you. She's, she's a little closer. And Barry will help. Thank you, Barry. Yeah. Thank you all. As we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings this morning, we remember how abundantly gracious God has been to his people.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, receive these gifts and offerings today from our hearts as a testament of our gladness. God, take these offerings that we have given and humbly use them in your kingdom for your service, that Jesus Christ alone may be Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Blessings all around indeed. What a joy it is to count them, to name them one by one, to worship here together today in this place with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Our gospel lesson today on this Christ the King Sunday comes from Luke chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. It's in your pew Bibles today on page 1037. I invite you, if you're able, to stand today in honor of the reading of the gospel. Luke writes that when they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? 
Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, let your kingdom come indeed on earth as it is in heaven. As we have heard these words today read, we remember, O oh God, remember your suffering, your death. We remember, O oh God, your resurrection and your kingdom that is coming. God, steady our hearts today as we seek your Holy Spirit to enlighten these scriptures before us, to illumine any darkness within us, that we may take up our cross and follow you into your kingdom. And, O oh God, would you be with me, the one who preaches, that the words you have given to me to share today would be pleasing to you, my rock and my redeemer. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In 1953, when Queen Elizabeth was crowned Queen of England, her coronation was the first major world broadcast event to be broadcast internationally on television. Cameras had not been allowed up until that point inside the Westminster Abbey for her parents' coronation in 1937 and had covered only the procession outside. And there had been considerable debate within the British cabinet on the subject uh, with Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Churchill against the idea, but regardless, Elizabeth insisted on a televised event. Following Queen Elizabeth's recent passing, the date is set for her son, King Charles's coronation, to be held on Saturday, May 6, 2023. That's how long it's going to take for them to get ready. Not quite as long as it did for Queen Elizabeth, but a long time to prepare for this celebration. It will, too, take place at London's Westminster Abbey, and, see, and we'll see the monarch crowned alongside of his wife, Camilla, with all the world watching this royal event. We don't see too many coronations, but the crowning of a king or a queen is an incredible, incredible event. Everyone is adorned with beautiful clothes, beautiful liturgy, beautiful music, and the feeling that we are all seeing something very important, something that will touch all our lives for at least a few years, or at least, you know, a day until we get bored of it again. The king and queen being crowned and anointed with sacred oil and everyone bowing to show their loyalty is indeed a sight to behold. If you've seen uh, Disney's hit movie Frozen, you know that it begins after the death of King and Queen of Airedale have died during a voyage at the sea. We'll go into land of make-believe here for just a minute. Uh, but their eldest daughter, Elsa, is ready to assume the responsibilities of ruling the kingdom. And Elsa's younger sister awakes and announces and says excitedly, It's Coronation Day! And the movie begins, and that's how it starts with Elsa's coronation, and indeed it's a moment of excitement. Today's coronation that Luke reports is for Christ the King. Everything is there. The celebration is ready. The soldiers, after they finish scourging Christ and beating him, they sit him down and they find for him a crown, a crown of thorns. And they kneel down before him. And they put a purple cloak around him because it's the sign of royalty. They put a scepter, a reed in his hand because he is the king of the Jews. And they even have a sign written by Pilate himself saying, I-N-R-I in Latin, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. And then they prepare his throne and he has to carry it up a hill. But when he gets there, his throne is laid out before him and they nail him to it. And they put him up and they start jeering and making fun of the king 
of the Jews, saying, You saved others. How come you can't save yourself? Save yourself, Jesus. This isn't the first time that Jesus has been tempted to exalt himself. Remember, after Jesus is baptized by his cousin John in the Jordan River, he endures a season of 40 days in the desert where Satan mocks him, saying, If you are the Son of God, if, if you are the Son of God, then tell this stone to become bread. Luke chapter 4, the devil led Jesus to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answers, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve God only. And so the devil led Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said, If... You are the Son of God. He said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to guard you carefully, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. And what an opportunity for Satan to pick up where he left off on Jesus' coronation day, looking as if he had finally won the battle over God the Father. There's an old story that was passed around during the Middle Ages that there were two men who were watching a king get out of his golden chariot and go into the church for a service. And one of one says to his friend, he says kind of angrily because he felt that royalty was very cruel to him. And he says, I live to see the day when royalty are treated as common people. And his friend turns to him and says, I live to see the day when common people are treated like royalty. And Jesus surely represents this second friend because to God, there's no such thing as being treated like royalty unless you treat everyone like royalty. Today, on this last Sunday of the church year, of the, of the liturgical calendar, with next Sunday beginning the season of Advent, celebrating our new Christian New Year, we start with waiting for Christ to come. But today, the end of the year, is a very special Sunday. It's Thanksgiving Sunday as well. Uh, Thanksgiving actually isn't on the liturgical calendar, and truly Christ the King wasn't added until, uh, my understanding, was back in the 1920s, so it's a fairly new addition to the liturgical calendar. But that's what we celebrate today in the liturgical calendar, and the, the texts in the lectionary for the reign of Christ always bring us right here to the crucifixion of Christ, which is a little bit jarring for me, isn't it, for you? It seems almost like we're going backward Backward to Easter, backward to Lent. We're nowhere near there in, in the calendar. We're waiting already even for the baby Jesus, for the Christ child. Not returning to the crucified Christ. But the text drops us into this crucifixion, crucifixion scene and we have to figure it out. What's, what's going on here? Beginnings and endings get all mixed up until we're reminded that our beginnings are endings and endings are always beginnings to God I love that hymn of promise in our end is our beginning in our death eternity resurrection so for me on this reign of Christ Sunday it's the perfect last Sunday before the beginning of Advent Advent is a journey and it's always wise before you take a long journey to look ahead to where you are ultimately going, to have your destination in mind. And if you have many stops and legs of travel and twists along the way, even if you take it piece by piece, it's a good idea to know what you expect at the end. And in Advent, we might think of Christmas as the end, but today reminds us that we celebrate Jesus' birth because of who Jesus becomes and where Jesus takes us. Today we stop and ask, who is the Christ that we're about to celebrate? 
Who is this man, this God, this king, that we will spend the next month or more anticipating his birth? And our reading today takes us here to Golgotha, the place of the skull. Here in Luke's account, the actual process of crucifying Jesus merits just a passing phrase. They crucified Jesus there with the criminals. But the details come from those who, are, who watch Jesus dying. They come from the religious leaders. They come from the soldiers, from the two criminals with whom he is crucified. From most, there's this repeated refrain. Why doesn't Jesus save himself? He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, if he is the chosen one. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourselves. Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us, says one of the criminals. Only from the other criminal do we hear anything different. He declares that the two criminals are only justly paying the price for their two crimes, but that Jesus has done nothing wrong. And he then asks Jesus to remember him when he comes into his kingdom. And Jesus responds that truly today the man will be with him in paradise. For our celebration of Christ the King Sunday, we have a Jesus who seems most unkingly, don't we? He's mocked, beaten, suffering, harassed, murdered. How is this Jesus a king? The inscription that's placed above him, his sentence, the crime for which he was being crucified, reading, this is the king of the Jews, but it's meant as mockery. A man being crucified between criminals is hardly a king. The sentence pokes fun at Jesus, at his disciples, at his followers. But yet, we believe Jesus reigns. So how is Jesus king? Well, today for us, it's about putting the emphasis in the right place. So this Sunday is perhaps not about the fact that Jesus is king, but about the fact that Jesus is king. Do you hear the difference? This Sunday is not about the fact that one characteristic of Jesus is his kingship, is his divine royal status. It's not just one characteristic among many others. Instead, this Sunday celebrates the fact that it is Christ who is supposed to be placed as king or as highest authority in our lives. Jesus is king. Like it or not, believe it or not, Jesus is Lord. Remember the night that Jesus was arrested in the garden and they come looking for him. The soldiers come and looking to arrest him. And they say, we're looking for Jesus. And Jesus says to them, I am he. And what happens? The soldiers instantly fall down. They fall down. They can't help it. They can't help but to fall down. Lutheran pastor Nadia Bowles Weber talks about her favorite Christmas song, which is Oh Holy Night, in a sermon that she gave on Christ the King Sunday a few years ago, and specifically about that line, fall on your knees. And she says, for that is what we do before a king. Fall on your knees, she says, before a God whose love comes to us in delicate, unprotected, unarmed, defenseless flesh. Fall on your knees before the one who loves without caution, without measure, without concern for pre-existing conditions. Fall on your knees before the one who submitted to the very worst that humans are capable of, who let the twisted thing in us, the thing in us capable of betrayal and flogging and violence and vengeance and even murder, and didn't say, I'm going to get you back, but instead said, you are forgiven. You don't even know what you're doing. Because at the feet of this king, she says, what can we do but spread out our trophies, our victories, our standard of living, and our delusion of safety? Fall on your knees because we are out of solutions here. His kingdom is not of this world's values. Christ is our king because the human violence competition, the need to be right, 
and the need for everyone else to be wrong and the belief that God favors us above all others and the use of that delusion to kill and alienate is seen by Jesus for what it is so, so small. This, she says, is why we are in need, not of a king, but of a savior, who draws all people to himself in the pure love of what James Allison calls the non-resentful loser, a crown of thorns and a throne of a cross. What can we do but spread our trophies at his pierced feet and call him Lord of all? I would add that after we fall on our knees, it's important that we get up, that we take our rightful place as children of God. John writes in the first chapter, starting at verse 10, Christ was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. Paul writes to the Galatians, saying, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son and a daughter. And if a son and daughter, then an heir through God. We might remember the story of the prodigal son from Luke's 15th chapter that a man had two sons. And the younger son asked his father to give him the money that his father had promised him, and his father obliged. And then the younger son left home and went to live in a far country. He soon went through all the money that his father had given him, through riotous living and a careless manner. And when all of his money was gone, a famine spread across the land, and he found himself starving. And so to support himself, he went and he found work in the fields feeding the pigs. But he was so hungry that he started to just even eat the pig slop that the pigs ate. Until one day, he got up and he realized that his father's servants had bread enough to eat, and yet he had none. And so he resolved to go home and to beg for his father's forgiveness and to ask his father to take him in under his roof, just as one of his hired servants. And when the son returned home, his father saw him in the distance, and he ran to him, and he kissed him. And the son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven, and, and in thy sight I'm not even worthy to be called your son. But his father prepared a coronation, and he called out his servants to get a robe, and to put it on his son, and to get a signet ring, and put it on his hand, and to put shoes on his son's feet. And then he killed the fatted calf and prepared a meal, and they celebrated at this prodigal's coronation, saying, this is my son that was dead and is alive again. He was lost, and now he's found. What a glorious coronation day. So, beloved, let it rain down on us today and on all who confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. May it be so today. In the name of our beloved Christ, amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that all people might come within the reach of your saving embrace. Clothe us in your spirit that we, stretching out our hands in loving service for others, May bring those who do not know you to an awareness and love of you, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever. Amen. You're invited today to affirm your faith boldly, 
to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord as we turn to our affirmation of faith for the day, which is on page 886. I invite you to stand if you are able. And if you would respond in the bold print. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose again and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe. God, help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. As we draw this Christ the King Sunday celebration to a close, we turn to our hymn of invitation, which is Victory in Jesus, as we celebrate today Christ's reign on earth as it is in heaven. I want to invite you today in this invitation to remember who you are, as we, as re as we have remembered Christ's authority and Christ's kingdom, that you would remember who you are and who you are whose you are, as Bishop Fairley so often reminds us. Remember who you are and remember whose you are. As we sing Victory in Jesus, I want to invite you to come, if you are, are comfortable doing so, to kneel, to fall down, and to be anointed today. As we sing this closing hymn, if you are in your seat and you desire to be anointed today, if you would show that just by lifting of your hand, I'd be glad to come to where you are today. That you would remember who you are and whose you are as we sing of the wonderful victory in Christ Jesus.
Almighty and everlasting God, it is your will to restore all things to Christ, whom you have anointed priest forever and ruler of creation. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united under the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Beloved, go forth in peace. The grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit going before you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 